Welcome again. This is Robert Shine, Managing Director and Partner of Blanky Shine Wealth Management. Thank you for joining us for our Thursday, March 23rd edition of Market Insights and Observations. Let's get right to our three topics of the day, and thank you for watching. So our three topics of the day, we're going to start off with the Fed, the Treasury, and then we'll follow up with the corporate earnings um, as we see them playing out. But let me get back to first topic of the day, as expected, as we have at Blanky Shine Wealth Management been communicating. Uh, the Federal Reserve sort of did the dev, uh, the dovish pause, if you will. Um, not 100%, but the language, we're going to walk through some of the language and get right to it. But the Fed basically uh, was poised to approve a quarter basis point cut last week. And so the markets actually yesterday uh, were up for the majority of the day as a result of that because it wasn't, more, it wasn't a surprise. I was on CNBC as I, I, I spoke about this. Uh, even the night before, and there's an 80% chance uh, and expected that they were going to raise by 25 basis points. But it ultimately was the language that was built in uh, that was actually kind of, uh, you know, threading the needle. In fact, I use that exact language the night before. The Federal Reserve Chairman is going to have to thread the needle because it was a very uh, important meeting, in fact, the most important meeting of this Fed cycle, this tightening cycle that we've seen over the last year. And so they... Federal Reserve Chairman went into some quotes, and let me get those here. So let's get right to uh, the notable quotes and what was said by the Federal Reserve Chairman. Basically, in his press conference, and as I said before, it's not so much the actions, because again, it was already sort of anticipated, expected, so no surprises by raising by 25 basis points. It really comes down to the press conference, what they actually say, what the language is, what the posture is, what the confidence level is. All of that matters, believe it or not. So there's sort of three key uh, takeaways and quotes from Jerome Powell. Uh, the first of being additional policy firming may be appropriate, which is good because we have an inflation problem well above 6% still. So inflation is stubborn and sticky and wage inflation is embedded in the economy. And the worst case, worst policy error that the Federal Reserve could do, and this is what the issue was late 70s, which kicked you know, the, the prime to 21.5% in early 80s, and Federal Reserve Chairman's actually had two turnover before Paul Volcker actually got a hold and ahead of inflation, breaking the back. And for the next 20 years, it ultimately was a positive, not only for inflation in the United States, but globally, but also in the equity markets. Equity markets took off for two-decade expansion over that course of period of time. That's how inflation is, uh, in terms of getting a hold and a handle on it, is so impactful because it impacts corporate earnings, impacts quality of life, as well as kitchen table economics, as I always talk about. So the, the, the not backing away from the table saying, hey, listen, we're going to still be keeping our eyes squarely on the ball, which is inflation, and get a handle on it and stay above it. And that was welcome news. Okay, so we didn't want the ultimate pause. However, uh, ongoing increases in a targeted range will be appropriate. Translation, data dependent. Uh, he did acknowledge that there are some signs in the economy that the lagging effects, the cumulative effects of the interest rate increases uh, are actually having an impact uh, in terms of uh, bringing some areas of the economy uh, that are impacted by inflation down. And we're seeing that all across. So before the events, um, we were clearly on track to continue our ongoing rate hikes. Uh, the events of the last two weeks, he's talking about Silicon Valley Bank, uh, Signature Bank, and obviously we're seeing um, Credit Suisse with UBS last weekend and some other small regionals right now having some difficulty. So their eye is basically, you know, they, what we wanted to hear is they're not keeping their head in the sand. Uh, they're basically now being real-time data dependent and likely to result in some tightening in credit conditions. Translation, and a real quick uh, sort of what's going to, the knock-on effects. As the small regional banks, uh, and we've seen a lot of influx here at Blanky Channel Wealth Management from banks right across the street, clients bringing in, uh, you know, their deposits because we're looking at, you know, treasuries again at 4% versus banks not paying, but then also worrying about our deposits at the, the, the small banks. So we're seeing a lot of that. If you have some bank cash you want to put to work, uh, that's ultimately what's happening across this, you know, all across Wall Street. And that's a bigger issue for the banking, uh, sort of the, the small regionals. Now, on the small regionals, if you think about it, as your deposits shrink, people are taking money out, putting in bigger banks. As deposits shrink, you have a less of an opportunity to lend moving forward. So your loan portfolio, your profitability, your bank earnings will then have a smaller, basically a slowing down effect. And Jerome Powell actually 
discussed this in his press conference saying that their credit tightening could affect across the United States, have an actual impact of another quarter point uh, rate increase that they don't have to do. So now this is out of the control of the Federal Reserve and they have now sort of breaking the back of inflation or excuse me, they're raising rates until something breaks. They, they basically did that at least what we saw the last couple of weeks. Now we have to see the fall on uh, fallout and spillover effects as a result of that, which means lending standards are going to get tighter. Uh, less lending means for small business owners, less of the willingness to either expand the business by capital expansion or even expanding by employees, um, let's say adding additional employees. So that then will help the labor market. So is this part of the ultimate Fed plan? Who knows? But it's it's also curious to see how uh, sort of cautious we have to be with regards to the markets. Markets are up big today. They were big down yesterday. Why did they sell off after Jerome Powell actually said, you know, all of, all of sort of the dovish um, uh, comments and it's not a pause, but it was pretty close. Well, the reason why is right before the market closed, Janet Yellen was testifying a bunch uh, in front of Congress, and she basically rained on Powell's parade by saying, "Well, previous two weeks were special case scenarios by you know basically in, you know guaranteeing all of the bank deposits for the two previous issues that we saw. However, moving forward." Uh, we're not going to make an implicit or explicit uh, sort of um, guarantee moving forward. Actually, she came out and said explicitly that they're not going to do that. And it's going to be a case by case basis, which is now a bigger issue because you can't save the two banks or three banks earlier in the week. And, you know, moving forward, and now we're going to pick and choose. And so that's sort of a tightrope that the the markets didn't like. You know, you ultimately said over here uh, in the previous weeks that the government's going to backstop, Treasury's going to backstop all deposits, and now she specifically said something to the count contrary, which then ultimately made um, sort of Wall Street and investors and everyone saying, wait a minute, uh, that's what the raining on the parade looks like, and that's what ultimately happened yesterday afternoon. So there's going to be more language we anticipate in terms of clarity, uh, in terms of moral hazard, in terms of who you choose to be winners and losers. Uh, but that's why I said, again, on CNBC, we are, we are being cautious. We're being uh, prepared for strategic rebalancing when markets provide opportunities because there's going to be some great opportunities moving forward because of uh, a lot of what the Fed, the Treasury, and even the banking system system has to clear up and, and sort of get through over the next, you know, three to six months, if you will, in the short term here. Now, also keep in mind that um, earnings are hanging in there. And this is too early. We're still in the first quarter of 2023. Uh, so corporations aren't reporting earnings, but we always keep a look at the key matrix. And in the earnings report, ultimately, uh, what we're seeing here, and I'll just go to the chart. This is a chart right here of the S&P 500 forward 12 month earnings per share change versus the price change. So the blue line is the actual to forecasted earnings per share uh, of what corporate uh, America S&P 500 earn. So blue line are earnings. And the black line is actually what the price of the S&P 500 is. So remember, sometimes uh, the market gets ahead of itself saying, hey, listen, earnings are going to be strong. Uh, and, and Or sometimes there's a disconnect where the S&P 500 uh, is undervalued. We saw a substantial you know, period of time here where there was that divergence or um, that undervalued play right here. But right now, we've got pretty much in this category, I'll just keep trying to see if we can see this, where both the forward 12-month earnings and the price change, or the price of the S&P 500, which is around 4000 right now, are basically all together right now. So it could break one way or another, and that's what everyone's sort of trying to hold their breath and anticipate. Hey, listen, do corporate earnings deteriorate? Do they start slowly going down? Is our earnings recession moving forward? Uh, and or do earnings hang in there? Are they resilient? And do they continue to grind higher? Well, Rob, how's this going to be the case? Well, as I said, again, on CNBC, and we'll show you the clip because I referred to it several times just now. The corporations are bigger, faster, stronger, especially the large caps like we hang out in with our clients as we build client portfolios, 
are strong enough to be resilient and work through, uh, let's say if there's an, a recession or lay off, as we saw big tech do, they laid off a lot and they're preparing for potentially, hey, let's preserve the bottom line. Listen, if I'm a shareholder, okay, I want that company to be quick, nimble, and not to be uh, reactionary, but more importantly, proactive, whether they need the extra 10,000 or not. And uh, you know, here's a dirty little secret that we're seeing. Uh, we have a lot of clients that are in the tech space, and we've seen uh, some of our clients have had the opportunity to be, you know, get the, uh, the the notice. Hey, listen, you're being laid off. You're in the batch of ten thousand, uh, and so all of a sudden we get the call from Blake Shane with Management. Hey, what do we do? Uh, immediately a week later, they get hired back by a different division. So, you know, it's also an opportunity for companies to go lean and mean and say, hey, listen, this whole division is being shut down and then turn around and say, hey, listen, let's cherry pick those that are the most efficient, the best, the brightest, and that management that we want to still retain or, retain, or engineers that we want to retain. So there's sort of, you can't read the headlines, uh, but it's an opportunity for these corporations to be lean and mean. Now, this is kind of interesting. This is the mentions in corporate earnings reports going back to September of uh, 2020, uh, 2020 to March right now of 2023 and the word is resilient in the court company transcripts as they report well this is consistently consistent right here in fact uh there's corporate um transcripts that are saying listen we're becoming resilient it's the price elasticity if you remember in economics it's the ability to pry to pass on the higher inflation the higher cost of goods sold cost to the end consumer so right now we still have the consumer strong we will wait and see how that shakes out moving forward. Uh, but companies are able to figure out real-time, proactive versus reactionary, how to maintain that profit margin. And again, if we look into 2024 as markets look over the Fed hike or pause in the future, that's why potentially markets could be up. And as well, they look into the future, let's say 2024 earnings, there's a projection for earnings and profitability to be up by 10%. Uh, in 2024. That's the projected uh, sort of earnings per share right now. And one key factor could be just the word resilient. Corporations can move quicker, faster, and navigate through a potential earnings recession, bigger recession, who knows. Uh, but that's welcome news if you're holding on to companies like we are in building portfolios and investing. Uh, to companies that can weather the storm. And as you know, once you get through the storm and you have big companies, they get bigger and stronger as a result. They they accumulate and pick up sort of smaller companies that need the help or the liquidity. And then ultimately the economic cycle is you get the economies of scale. Companies then will become leaner, meaner as they reduce the workforce. Uh, so there's an opportunity for big companies to capitalize on on recession. So they're not all that bad when you see the earnings, we see an, or the word or the headline recession out there, uh, sort of on our nightly news. In fact, ultimately, when we actually enter a recession, historically speaking, the market usually bottoms either, you know, three months or six months before then and starts taking off. So the equity markets actually do better uh, and start turning around once the economy actually enters recession. I'll hit more on that when we have more time and I'll show you sort of historical uh, iterations of how that plays out. Uh, so we're getting to the point where we're cautiously optimistic. We're gonna watch corporate earnings. We know that the banking sector still has uh, ways to go. Uh, and, but in the more more importantly, we're positioned in short-term cash, treasury, so on and so forth. So that's our update to take advantage of that situation. So watch the CNBC link, uh, but thanks for joining us for our market insights and observations today and have a great day.